Hi, I'm Peter Gilroy with Bonnie Dune Tools. Today we're going to be making some little stud earrings with one of our shop plates in sterling silver. So first off, we're going to start by using 18 gauge wire to make our shot to the precise size to fit this. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to get started here, we're going to go ahead and make our shot. Now in the instructions for the shot plates, each design is laid out and it has the precise measurement in millimeters of 18 gauge wire to be used to make the shot. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one little Art Deco hemisphere um, and we need 120 millimeters of 18 gauge wire for this piece. So using my digital caliper set to 120 millimeters, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out a piece of this wire and trim it with my flush cut pliers. And then to make this a lot easier to melt, I'm going to go ahead and take some chain nose pliers and ball up the wire. Now I'm going to make a few more of these and then we're going to go melt them. I'm going to put a little bit of handy flux on the wire to keep it from oxidizing. And now I'm going to go ahead and melt these into a nice sphere. Now we're just going to pickle these till they're nice and clean. So to start we need to set up our press. Here I'm working with our classic pro manual hand pump press. Um, and a few tools we're going to need is first of all our master tool holder. This bolts into the top platen with two bolts. Now we have our coining punch. So this is a hardened tool steel punch. This goes up into the master tool holder. You want to make sure it's firmly up there and then you tighten down this set screw on the side. Here on the base we have our coining support block and this just helps give us a nice stable base for our die to sit on just to make sure that everything is fully supported. Now got my nice little shiny shot here. So I'm going to go ahead and place this into the die that I want to use. I'm just going to want to center this on the center of the coining punch. I'm going to go ahead and pump this up. Now with all of these shot plate dies on a 20 ton press, you never really need to take it past about 5,000 PSI on the gauge. Also another thing to note is the gauges are all filled with glycerin. So this is totally normal. It looks like liquid inside the gauge. That helps protect the gauge from shocks and other things that could damage it. So totally normal thing there. So take it up to 5,000 PSI and release. Sometimes the shot will get kind of stuck in there. Uh, you can use flush cut pliers to kind of pry it out. Now you can see that has a nice good impression. So we're just going to go ahead and do that a few more times. All right, so now that I have these little earrings stamped out, I'm going to go ahead and put them back in the die. Kind of got to wiggle it around to make sure it seats back in the right spot. And then Using my scribe, my scratch all, I can go ahead and place this in the center by eye. Using a hammer, I'm just gonna tap a nice little hole in there. And what this is gonna do is gonna give me a place to solder my earring post. In order to get a good impression on any of these shot plates, the shot needs to be slightly larger than the actual die. But what happens is that ends up leaving us a small flange around each piece after we press it. It's totally normal. Um, and it's pretty easy to clean up. So there's a few different ways to do that. First of all, the easiest way is just to use a file. This is a nice round shape, so it's easy to just go around and file that flange right off. Another way that I like to do this is using a diamond cutoff wheel. And I'll go ahead and try to find the item number and leave this in the description. But using your Fordham flex shaft and this diamond cutoff wheel, it essentially acts as a nice file that you can control a little easier.
after getting the flange all filed and cleaned up, I just want to go ahead and polish and smooth the back edge of this earring here. So I have a silicone rubber polishing. This is kind of a fine grit to it. And I'm just going to go around and just polish this edge, smooth it out. And then I'm going to go around on the back side and just kind of round that back edge out a little bit just to make it nice and smooth. So in order to hold the earrings while I'm soldering the post on the back, uh, I'm using a cheap little old bulber to cut depressions into my charcoal block so that I can put the little hemisphere down in that and it'll hold it more securely. So now we're going to go ahead and solder our earring posts onto the back of our studs. So the nice little hole that we created with the scribe is going to help us to place this post into the earring and to get it to solder easily and securely. So I took a pair of my soldering pliers and I created a little groove so that it holds that earring post in there nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut a few small pieces of medium solder. Go ahead and put those here and I will flux those a little bit of flux while I'm at it. Use a little handy flux on the earring studs. I'm gonna switch out to a smaller torch tip. And now I'm gonna go ahead and flux the earring post and use the earring post to pick up the ball of solder. I'm just going to melt the solder and then pick it up with the earring post. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get my stud earring. I'm going to get this nice and hot just to the point of being ready to solder, and then I'll bring my post down and place it. Alright, that one's done. Alright, and there's my post soldered on there. Nice good joint. I'm going to go ahead and pickle these. All right, got that polished up. Give it a little final polish with a sunshine cloth. And there you go, a nice little pair of stud earrings made with our shop plates. All right, so now that I showed you guys how to make just some simple sterling stud earrings. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple more techniques to add some gold and to add some more interest to these pieces. So I've got another piece of wire cut um, and again just like before I'm going to go ahead and create a nice piece of shot out of this. My shot is nicely pickled here. It's looking good and clean. Um, I'm going to take one extra step to just try to deplete any of the copper out of the surface. Um, so that we can fuse some gold to it. I'm just going to warm it up and let some oxides form. All right, now we're going to go ahead and pickle that. Okay, so here I've got my shot that I just finished, and I've got some little scraps of 22 karat gold sheet, really thin, they're scraps from a previous project. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and put these scraps of gold down in my shape. So we're going to do this little spirally fluted design. I'm just going to put three of those in there, kind of spread them out. And you can do this with wire, you can do this with scrap. Um, takes a little experimenting. 
Um, just, you know, but it's kind of fun. You can play with different designs, different ideas. Now I'm going to drop my shot in there. Just like that. And we're going to go press it. All right, now we can release this and see what we've got. So our gold is nicely pressed into this piece and it actually sticks really well, but it's not a really good joint yet. Um, it's sort of just squished together for lack of a better technical term. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and heat this up very near the point of melting to go ahead and diffuse these two metals together. All right, that looked like it fused pretty well, so I'm gonna go ahead and pickle this. Okay, so now my shot that I just fused and pickled is all ready to go. I cleaned it up a little. Anytime you are working with pickle, you wanna make sure to really thoroughly rinse your piece and dry it off. Get all of that pickle off of there or else you can rust your dyes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and press this again just to get a nice, clean, crisp impression. Um, and so I'm gonna put it back into the dye. I'm gonna push it down and just make sure it's indexed in the right spot. Now let's press. I'm gonna go ahead and use some flush cut pliers just to gently grab this, pops right out. Now we have a really nice clean crisp impression with that gold in there. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks now for cutting this out. One thing that I found on Rio's website are these solder pliers. These are really great, it has a little 90 degree edge and I can go in here and I can trim out these inside corners of my shape. So now I have a black silicone rubber abrasive. It's a little coarser of an abrasive and I'm gonna trim this wheel and get it all trued up with a, just a cheap little diamond plate. Now you can see I have nice sharp crisp corners on this. Now I'm gonna go in and just kinda smooth out and blend away that flange. All right, so that's all nice and cleaned up. Um, now, when I'm working with silver and gold, I always like to do a liver of sulfur patina to darken the silver and to really make the gold pop. I found that works best with a matte finish. I'm gonna put on one of these 3M brushes. This is the coarsest one I think that they make, and this gives a nice matte satin finish. All right, so I like to use this Midas liver of sulfur. It's the kind of granule form. Um, I usually just take a small little piece about this big, like a little tinier than a pea size, drop that into the cup, and now I'm gonna add boiling water. Got my little stud earring here on some tweezers, and I like to just dip this for about 10 to 15 seconds. Whirl it around, and there are patinas starting to form. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my brass bristle brush here with some soap and hot water and give it a really nice burnishing cleaning with the brass brush. And then I like to do this process two to three times just to get a really good patina on it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys all found something useful in that video. And uh, yeah, I hope you can take these techniques and play with them and explore and come up with your own cool creations. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're working to put out lots of content for you about how to use these tools, about all of the cool things you can make. Um, so like and subscribe, follow along. Um, and yeah, we'll be back with more. Thanks.